But then let's continue with uh, uh, Dimitri. And of course, here we are focusing on uh, solutions or attempts uh, that have been made so far uh, to solving uh, this uh, crisis. And of course, uh, this question uh, to you, Mr. Dimitri, how do you assess the significance of the missed agreement and uh, the attempt uh, made to resolve uh, the conflict uh, uh, peacefully? How do you assess the role of uh, Russia and Western countries, particularly in uh, this process? We repeatedly made uh, efforts uh, to help uh, to resolve this uh, inter-Ukrainian conflict, this civil war that er erupted after Kyiv regime started uh, military operation against the residents of Donbas. Uh, the best chance to do so was uh, with the implementation of Minsk agreements, uh, the package of measures uh, which was signed in 2015, the second package. and. This uh, package included a lot of concrete steps, which would be quite rational for any other country. Um, and they were implemented by OSCE, as you know, uh, but it turned out to be, as we know perfectly well right now, that these uh, disagreements were nothing but a smokescreen for Ukraine and its, uh, its uh, Western backers uh, to arm Ukraine and to prepare it uh, for a conflict with Russia. And uh, Ukraine was gradually becoming anti-Russia, threatening our country, uh, absolutely despising uh, the rights of Russian-speaking population, which is uh, which still constitutes majority of Ukrainian population, regardless of what you can read in Ukrainian media, but the Russian language is still omnipresent uh, in Ukraine. Some people are, on, are only afraid of using it, but this is their native language. And there is nothing bad uh, uh, elsewhere in the world to promote uh, the rights of minorities, but in Ukraine somehow it, it started to face problems. And uh, our former Western partners, instead of uh, teaching Ukraine how to deal democratically with all these issues, they started to support the Ukrainian regime, uh, assuming that uh, Russian speakers do not have any future in, in Ukraine, that Russian language doesn't have any future, that the version of history that was imposed by Western Ukrainians uh, implying heroization of, uh, of Nazi collaborators, that only this version of history is right and it should be implemented throughout the whole of Ukraine. This all uh, moves uh, didn't uh, contribute to looking for a peaceful solution. Uh, so when we started uh, our special military operation in February 2022, uh, we didn't see any other way out to stop uh, the uh, actions of Kiev regime against the civilian population of Donbas. It was preceded by uh, intensification of shelling of Donetsk and Lugansk when hundreds of thousands of refugees started to come to Russian uh, territory, and uh, it also was preceded by diplomatic moves by my country to uh, pr to, pr to propose uh, treaties on European security uh, to, to NATO and the United States, which were rejected, uh, condescendingly re rejected. So we made several efforts to do so. Then we understood that uh, we are on the eve of a very massive, uh, mass scale provocation uh, from Ukrainian regime, which might imply uh, massive military operation against Donbas, and uh, then we decided uh, to start our special military operation. Um, mm -hmm. And during the pace of our special military operation, the first phase of our operation was very quick. And you, as you remember, our uh, our military uh, were near capital Kiev and uh, in some other places. So um, in in a month. And during this time, there were several efforts to uh, to, con to come to certain negotiated solution. The most important of them uh, almost succeeded uh, in uh, at the beginning of April, end of March 2022, when there were talks first in Minsk, then in uh, Istanbul, Istanbul, and uh, when draft treaty was uh, initialed by Ukrainian delegation. Uh, this draft treaty uh, had very, a lot of uh, a lot of things that uh, Ukraine uh, is uh, maybe dreaming about right now, 
but the time has been lost after that. And uh, of course, uh, the condition for moving forward was uh, Ukraine becoming a uh, neutral state and uh, rights for Russian language and uh, good neighborhood uh, with Russia. Uh, all these things were in this document. And initially, as I said, Ukraine accepted this document. But uh, when it was announced, uh, all of a sudden, uh, Ukraine uh, became a target of uh, a lot of pressure from mostly uh, the UK and the US. Uh, and uh, all these people, uh, first and foremost, uh, Boris Johnson, former um, British prime minister who visited Kiev, tried to uh, discourage uh, Zelensky to sign this document and try to convince him that Ukraine will be capable of uh, winning against Russia uh, and that the terms of this agreement uh, are not good for Ukraine. And he and, and other uh, Western politicians uh, succeeded in uh, convincing Zelensky that Ukraine could win. And Zelensky rejected this treaty and instead of this started uh, to uh, invest in a very uh, large scale military uh, campaign against Russia. So he, he made a bet on winning militarily against Russia, which was a bi big and fatal mistake, as we all understand right now. And I think that even himself understands right now. So the role of the West was also uh, uh, key here. And the West was not interested uh, of, um, of Ukraine and Russia living in peace, because that was not the reason why the West has triggered this uh, crisis uh, uh, from the outset. So the, ta the task was to to weaken Russia. Of course, they understand that it's, it's impossible to uh, inflict a, a defeat on Russia, but maybe they also counted that the Russian society will be uh, mobilized against President Putin, that there will be internal unrest, and uh, maybe they would be successful in uh, in a regime change in Russia, the things that have, they have done repeatedly all over the world. This was one of the calculations. And the second plan B was just to, uh, to weaken Russia as much as possible to get as many uh, losses of uh, Russian soldiers and Ukrainian soldiers as possible for Russia uh, to be uh, set back at the, mo at the position where it couldn't challenge the West. And uh, the sanctions that were introduced also by the United States and its allies uh, were also um, supposed to play a key role in this process, but they all failed. And uh, the sanctions, as you know, are, are working only uh, to the detriment of those who introduced these sanctions. Uh, also militarily, we all see the position on the battlefield and uh, the fact that Zelensky rejected uh, this um, chance for peace and since then has only offered uh, so-called peace plans which are, which are not peace plans uh, because they uh, their key element is uh, de facto uh, capitulation of Russia which is absolutely out of question so I think this fact uh, is uh, now uh, analyzed uh, all over the world and a lot of people uh, understand that the best uh, position in which Ukraine could have uh, good peace uh, has now already uh, passed by and uh, we don't know in what shape uh, the Kiev regime will be uh, during the next such attempt but so far there are even no such attempts and uh, still uh, Zelensky regime has no other way but to claim that it is capable of uh, winning over Russia because it needs military uh, assistance and equipment from the West and it uh, it needs uh, support, it needs money, and this corrupt country uh, couldn't uh, survive otherwise, otherwise, but only with the uh, with this um, life support, lifeline uh, from the West. So it's a vicious circle, which is very tragic for Ukraine as a country, because uh, hundreds of thousands of, of people have, have already perished, and the Zelensky regime is using them as a cannon fodder uh, for the uh, pursuit of absolutely foreign uh, geopolitical interests which have nothing to do with Ukraine, which have nothing to do with the interests of his people. And I think that more and more people understand, understand this, including in Ukraine.